What's going on guys, it's Garrett, and today we're going to get a pretty easy tutorial, this is going to be on color corrections, and uh, before I start with this, I want to tell you guys that uh, CCs and color correction is actually the same thing, it's just a uh, CC is just the abbreviation for it, and uh, this is pretty much what you guys see mostly throughout the Call of Duty scene, is um, people use CC a lot more than color correction just because it's a lot easier to type, and it's more of a uh, well-known thing. So uh, this is actually pretty easy, pretty easy to do to go with, and uh, we're going to be talking about pretty much what all these effects do and uh, how to make them. And we're not going to be using them on Call of Duty banners, these are going to be mostly used on in real life pictures, because I'm going to try to move towards more professional kind of series of stuff. When I get my new computer, I will be doing more Call of Duty stuff, but uh, for now I'm going to be using my laptop and this will be the uh, alternative. So uh, this is definitely something you guys want to stay in tune and watch with just because if you don't then you're going to be uh, making just plain old uh, wallpapers and plain old backgrounds and if you guys are going into photography or graphic design then you guys are going to need to learn how to do this stuff. So well, before I started this video I made a basic CC to go along with this and I'll have two wallpapers to show it off and uh, you guys can see that it's really a uh, really different kind of feel to it so uh, if this pops up this windows thing don't mind it it's gonna pop up every now and then but uh, it pretty much changes the colors and it enhances a lot of things so I have two wallpapers to show you guys what it looks like so you guys can see right here doesn't look as cool but when we click it on this one this one changes it by a lot so uh, what do you guys want to do to make these CC's is you guys want to open a new tab on Photoshop and open it like 1280 by 720 um, it doesn't really matter and then just put a uh, different wallpaper into it, like a HD uh, waterfall wallpaper or something with a with a certain kind of mood of colors, like cool colors, warm colors, and uh, if you guys don't know what those kind of colors are, um, I definitely watch videos on color theory. So uh, pretty much what you guys want to do is just open it, put your wallpaper in, and then right here is just pretty much where everything begins. So on the bottom right here next to under your layers, there's a trash can, there's a new layer, a new group, um, I don't know if this is called, but it looks like a half circle. Um, layer mask effects, and then your link layers. So uh, you're pretty much going to be only messing with these uh, adjustment layers and uh, it's really easy to do and uh, you pretty much just make as many as you want so I'm gonna go through a couple of them with you guys right now and show you guys the pretty much the basics of it so uh, how I start making my color corrections is I always click on hue and saturation first and this is when you guys want to make your colors a lot more uh, vibrant than they are and it kind of make, uh, grabs the attention of someone's eye when the colors are so much more vibrant so for right here when you guys open it there's a little tab will come up and there's gonna be a little dials in the middle of everything so if you drag it to the left it makes it more of a black and white and then if you drag it to the right more it makes it more color so when I do saturation, I usually leave it, leave it on about 20, and then right here, lightness, um, you guys can mess with it, make it brighter, make it darker, it's pretty much up to you, I kind of just keep it the same. So, uh, next thing you guys want to do is click back onto this adjustment layer, and then you guys can click exposure, and exposure is pretty much the, uh, the light and the color and how much it shows off. So I always go first and grab the gamma and bring it to the right more, I don't go above 1 also, I kind of keep it around like 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.9 if I have to. And this is pretty much just making some things darker, like the under the tree limbs go darker, and then where the light hits, it goes lighter. And uh, with offset, it's pretty much the actual color of the uh, the image itself, and if it's brighter, it's darker. And I kind of put that back to the same. And then exposure is pretty much um, the same thing with this gamma, but it's more of a defined kind of thing. So I don't really mess with that too much. If I do anything, it usually goes to the left, just because it's more of a, uh, a hassle to mess with exposure. So you guys can tell already that we already have these two colors, and it really changed it out already. But uh, what you want to do is keep going back into it, and you guys, are, you guys are pretty much not limited to anything. And there's so much stuff you guys can do. What I like to click on next is Channel Mixer, and pretty much Channel Mixer is uh, your colors, and you guys can pretty much make certain colors pop out more. So you guys can either go on your RGB colors, you guys can change it to uh, like Scion and like uh, CM1K. But I kind of leave them on these uh, RGB colors, and you guys can change the... Uh, the influence on these colors you guys can make the blue more blue the uh, green more green and I usually like doing this just a little bit and then the red is always a little nice to add the little tints just because there's little tints of red every now and then but uh, I'm gonna move it to the right actually make it a little lighter just because there's little reds right here and make it they're a little too dark for me and make it a little brighter so we'll pretty much click back onto this and then you guys can keep going through yourself. I'm not going to go through all of these with you, but you guys can pretty much do the same thing. Vibrance and saturation. We did saturation again, so we're only doing vibrance. And it does a lot, but you guys can't really see it. But when you start adding other stuff, you guys can really tell. And then to always finish this off, what you guys want to do is go to your curves, which is going to be the about the fifth one down. And just click this one, the top right corner, and a little bit down. And then move this one up a like a little bit. Not too much, it's like a little bit of a wave. And then you guys can leave that there. So uh, you guys want to be wondering how I group these. So what I do is I hold shift on the first one and I click the bottom one and I hit control G and then you guys can name this, just say enhancements. Enhancements YouTube. 
So, uh, let me just put this one on. See, this one's a lot more darker, but it's because we have, uh, more stuff like channel mixers, more exposure and curves, and, uh, this one's a lot more of a, uh, color brightening. But, uh, we're gonna go into more kind of things and using your gradients. So, if you guys go up here and click another one and just click on gradients, you guys can really change your gradients and how they go. So, let's just say you're gonna use a, uh, white to black. You guys can really change on these colors and stuff. You can make the top really bright, the bottom really dark. And then you guys can really mess with the opacity on stuff just to make it a little bit better. So, let's just put this on 50% just for this tutorial. So, uh, if you unclick this it's just regular click it again and then it's you can really tell that the lights coming from up here so uh, the next thing you want to do is pretty much just keep going back to these adjustment layers and pretty much repeating the process of what you did so the saturation first and you guys can pretty much do it yourself so I'm not gonna do everything I'm gonna do a little bit of other stuff and put some exposure on mess with the gamma and uh, just to make it more of a kind of gloomy feel and uh, if you put the offset up to the right a little more about like a point one or point two you guys can really make it a nice like I guess you can take a tum tumbler filter. So uh, I'm gonna pretty much just merge these two, hitting Control G again, and let's just label this like tumbl tumbler filter. All right, so you guys got that. Look at that. And then you have this enhancement. So uh, this is pretty much what you guys can do. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is pretty much black and white filters. So you guys are probably wondering why you guys would want to do this with Call of Duty, and it pretty much it makes your banners a lot more expressive and stuff. So the last thing you guys can do is click on black and white, and if you guys just put a regular black and white, it doesn't really do anything cool, it kind of just keeps it there. What you want to do is try to memorize the colors that you guys always see, so there's a lot of blue, and a lot of cyan, and there's a lot of green, and sometimes there's a lot of yellow, but the yellow really doesn't pop out, and then the red, you want to bring to the red a little bit, because it just takes out more highlights. So you guys can put that and then you guys can go back to your offset or your exposure and pretty much mess with your gamma control again just because you don't want to always keep the uh, same gamma and you guys can make like a really um, a really old photo kind of feel to it. You guys can put it really dark. So you guys can really mess with this and uh, see what really works for you. So we put it here and take the exposure up. So you guys can leave it like that. So uh, you guys can really tell that uh, putting these things on always works. So let's put black slash white uh, old. So uh, pretty much adding this stuff really changes the way the uh, the way the photo can actually feel. And let's just say you put one of, one of these on. Um, and there's, there's always stuff you guys can do. If I have my stock pack open, which I do. If it opens, there it is. You guys can really add stuff, so let's just say we're gonna add this blue displacement. Let's throw it in, just for kicks and giggles. I don't think it's gonna take up a lot. You guys can really just put this stuff on and then change it to like linear burn and mess with all these sizes, linear dodge add. And you can put this in like the corner and lower the opacity. And it really just creates a nice like old feel. You guys can see it looks kind of like a uh, scratch film. And it's really nice to do. So, uh, now that I've done that, you guys want to like, actually wonder how to pretty much save these. So what I do is I usually just keep the background the same thing I was using before. And then I'll label this like don't touch. And then I'll keep all these here. So uh, pretty much all these just change different things. Um, if you guys are doing this for let's just say a banner or for something more um, intense, what you guys want to do is make these CCs while you're making the banner. And it really helps out just the, all, the, the whole entire feel of the banner. And you never want to keep the same colors of your banner, you always want to make them enhanced a little bit. Like people use magic bullet looks all the time. But this is pretty much the easy way in Photoshop to do it and there's really nothing else you guys can do. So uh, the last thing you guys probably could do if you want to do anything is put like a nice little Gaussian blur around the corners. So let's put this like around 2.5. Hit enter, take like a big enough circle like around, let's just say a one, like 1500. And just kind of click in the middle a couple times. Computer's a little laggy. And, uh, oops. Pretty much just does it. Oh, man. But, uh, it'll, it'll literally just blur the edges, and you guys will have your whole thing. What are you doing? Alright, well, I'm gonna let this load. But I'll talk for a little bit while I talk while it loads. So uh, pretty much this is basically what you guys want to do is just make little like, CCs while you guys are making these uh, wallpapers. And the reason behind this is just it creates more of a, a custom feel to everything. It's a lot nicer to add rather than just putting stuff randomly. So uh, if you guys have any tutorial suggestions, let me know in the comments below. I'm sorry that these tutorials aren't even the best. Um, I'm getting my new computer very soon. I just ordered it about a couple days ago. So it should be here in around two or three weeks. And then I'll be making videos like that. 
So, uh, definitely, if you guys like this, leave a thumbs up. Also, I'll be leaving the uh, CCs in the uh, description below. See, now it loaded. Now it's going to click like a hundred other times. And uh, you guys can pretty much download the CCs in the description. And definitely, if you guys are having a um, hard time using these, let me know in the comments below. Just because um, it's really hard to do sometimes. And you guys really have to master your own banner and banner style. So, uh, that's pretty much the only thing I can say. The last thing I want to say to you guys is definitely remember what colors you guys are using. It's really important to feel this and find out like what other colors are. Like You guys can know those greens here, but there's going to be a little like brown, but that's actually orange and red mixed together. So, uh, yeah. So, if you guys enjoyed this, if you did, leave a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.